morning, everyone. As you can tell, I am not Pastor Jared. So we had a little change up in our scope today, so bear with us. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship service. Um, it's good to be indoors and not outside in the rain. Um, I hope everybody had um, a blessed week with the celebration of Christmas and spending time together with family and friends. Um, and then in, what, in a few days, we go to 2020. Uh, yesterday, when we were at prayer breakfast, we were talking about um, how it just seemed, it's hard to believe that 20 years has gone by since the Y2K, which some of you kids wouldn't even know what, kind of what we're talking about. Um, and I was over a friend's house for that particular, you know, New Year's, bringing the New Year's, and um, somebody turned the lights off at midnight where I was. So needless to say, it was Daryl. Not, not much of a surprise there. Uh, but I'll never forget that when the lights went off, everybody was like, oh, no. Uh, so it was quite entertaining. Um, thank you for that beautiful prelude, Pat. That was, um, you hit a lot of my favorites there. So we will start with the Bible memory verse. And today's Bible memory verse is from Isaiah 63, 7. Okay, follow along with me. I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel, according to his compassion many kindnesses. Isaiah 63, 7. For the call to worship today, um, today's message brings to mind the word fleeing. In our everyday lives, we don't have to face fleeing very often, except for Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock when we get out of work as quickly as possible. One example of fleeing is when a hurricane is predicted. With today's technology, there is usually plenty of notice in advance for those living along the coast. Government officials will often order evacuation and people flee from their homes. Most obey, but some do not. Sometimes those that do not listen pay for it with their own lives. In today's story, Joseph is visited by an angel and was told to take Mary and Jesus to Egypt. Herod had decreed all males under two years old be killed, so God's plan to protect Jesus was through Joseph. What if Joseph had refused? What if he thought he could protect his family on his own? His responsibility was not only to protect his family, but to protect the Savior of the world. That's quite a lesson in obedience. If we are open to God's leading and we are seeking his will, then we have the responsibility to be obedient to complete his work here on earth. We may not have to flee, but God can and does use every one of us if we let him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity to gather together to praise you and to worship you and to learn more about you. I ask your blessing upon each one of us here. I ask that you would be with us as we go throughout our week. Watch over and protect us. Help us to be a light into this world. And I pray this in your name, through your son, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And now Casey and Raina will lead us in song. <laughs> so sneaky. Good morning. Uh, let's stand for our first song this morning and uh, let's worship with a joyful noise. So clearly 
Grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Hallelujah, grace like rain falls down on me. Hallelujah, and all my stains are washed away, they're washed away. When we've been there, ten thousand Shining as the sun, we've no less day to sing your praise than when we first begun. between my fingertips I've hidden in the garden I've denied you with my very lips God I fought unto my knees with a hammer in my hand you look at me arms open Forgiven, forgiven, child, there is freedom from all of it. Say goodbye to every sin, you are forgiven. I've done things I wish I hadn't done I've seen things I wish I hadn't seen Just the thought of your amazing grace and I cried, Jesus, forgive me God, I fall down to my knees with a hammer in my hand, you look at me, arms open, forgiven, forgiven, child, there is freedom from all of it, 
Say goodbye to every sin you are forgiven. I could have been six feet under. I could have been lost forever. Yeah, I should be in that fire. But now there's fire inside of me. Here I am, a dead man walking. No grave gonna hold God's people. All the weight of all our evil lifted away forever free. Who could believe? Who could believe?
call the ushers forward for to take this morning's offering this morning's offering is for the general fund let's pray Emily father we just offer back a portion of what you have made possible for us to give we ask your blessing upon the offering and we also bless uh, the giver as well Help us to use it to run your kingdom here on earth. We pray this in your name, through your son Jesus, our Savior. Amen. There I was on death row Guilty in the first day Son of God hanging on a hill Hell was my destiny The crowd was shouting crucify Could have come from these lips of mine Dirty shame was killing me It would take a miracle to wash me became a free man that day. Felt like lightning hit my veins. My dead heart began to beat. Breath of God filled my lungs. And the Holy Ghost awakened me. Yeah, the Holy Ghost awakened me. Then I read the red letter, and the ground began to shake. Prison was. became a free man that day. God so loved the whole wide world, sent his only son to die for me. Arms spread wide for the destiny Thank you God Red letter And the ground began to shake The grace of God started falling and I became a free man that day and the world started falling And I am a free man today
children's moment. That was beautiful. How are you guys doing today? Good. We've got a small group. I know there's a lot traveling and different things going on. Um, on Christmas Eve uh, and Christmas Day, I know our family reads Luke 2. So I was going to say, this. I'm going to read a couple of the verses where we finished off with our kind of the Christmas festivities. Um, we read, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So they were glorifying and praising God. And we've been doing a lot of that, right? Like not just the last week, but maybe the last month or so. There's been lots of school programs, church programs. Um, and this last week, I think we had three full days of Christmas with different family. Um, you have different foods, exchange gifts. You do all kinds of stuff, right? And some people travel. I mean, there's a lot going on. Um, and sometimes when we step away from all this fun celebrating of Jesus' birth, people get kind of sad in January because there's this break from it, you know? You have all that fun and all this stuff together. You see people you don't see very often, and sometimes people get sad. But our celebrating is not over, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about why. Anybody want to venture a guess? No, it's okay. It's tiring. I get it. It's Sunday morning. Um, so, well, part of why is that Jesus was born a baby. He grew up to be a man. And Jesus is whose son? You guys can tell me this one. God's son, right? Right. So do you know something amazing about Jesus other than that he's God's son? I'll tell you. We don't feel very chatty today. Um, something amazing about Jesus. He never sinned, and he was perfect, and he is perfect. Do we sin? Yeah, we all do. <laughs> Every one of us does. And that keeps us, it separates us from God. I have two pieces of paper here. What does this one say? People. Okay, so we got one piece of paper that says people. That's us. I'm going to put it over here. All right. We have another piece of paper. What does it say? God. Okay, I'm putting God over here. All right. Do I have a volunteer? Oh, come on. I need a volunteer desperately. Oh, thanks, Emma. Okay, I want you to stand on people because that's you. You're representing all of us. Now, if you could not touch anywhere in between the two pieces of paper and I asked you to jump to get to God, could you do it? Probably not be really tricky, right? Unless somebody helped you. Um, or you had a hoverboard. Maybe. But we're, we're going we're gonna to say no. Okay, but here's the neat thing. Jesus was born a baby, and that's why we celebrate Christmas, and he grew up to become a man, and he never sinned. So he is able to be a bridge, okay? He's a bridge for us to be with God. So me see here. So Jesus is the bridge. And I want to see if with Jesus you could perhaps take the bridge to God. Can you do it for me, Emma? There we go. Now this may seem kind of strange. Thank you for your help. You can actually see. This may seem kind of crazy to think, like, Jesus isn't like a wooden bridge, right? Um, instead of being punished for our sins, Jesus, who's perfect, died for all of our sins, and he rose from the dead three days later. So what do we call that? 
what do we call that when we celebrate on a certain day Easter thank you Zeke we celebrate Easter um, we celebrate Easter in a few months but every single day we can celebrate that Jesus died for our sins and rose again because he loves us and he wants us to admit sin and ask him to live in our hearts so every day anytime she can have it, it's fine anytime we can talk to him and that's something to celebrate and it's something that we can share with others about so if people ask you like what was your children's moment about you can say hey we learned that Jesus is a bridge and they may say what do you mean Jesus is a bridge you can kind of talk about why Jesus is a bridge because you may have friends or family or loved ones that want to learn what makes Jesus a bridge okay so I have one of these for each of you, and you can draw a picture on it. It has a bridge on it. It says, Jesus loves you and me. And you can draw a picture. Those of you who are writing, you could write a note to somebody that you want to tell about Jesus and how he's a bridge and how he loves you. Um, we'll say a prayer, and then you guys can grab these and head back to your seats. Dear God, thank you so For today's scripture reading, I'll be reading from Matthew uh, 2, verses 13 through 23. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. May God bless the reading of his word. just experienced and celebrated. We know that Christmas comes each and every year, but it's always important and a special reminder just how creative and beautiful God can be when we let him be in charge of the plan. Only God can orchestrate such a magnificent order of events, many of which we will probably not truly understand the significance of. Psalms 148, 1 and 2 says this, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all the armies of heaven. As we recognize, praise, and celebrate, we are now called to look forward was quite the journey for Joseph and Mary to travel and welcome Jesus it was definitely not easy but we quickly come to see through the eyes of Matthew that the path forward has more difficulty in 
in store. We have to wonder about Matthew's wisdom or logic in placing this particular story in his gospel. It's a dark tale. It's a dark tale far removed from what we have just celebrated in the gentle and uplifting retelling of the birth of Jesus. Matthew, Matthew, after all, does have a darker take on the coming of the Messiah. His audience, largely, largely Jewish, were taught from infancy the prophecies of the ancient writings that we know to be the Old Testament. These words come out of the intrigue and mystery of a people who have battled for the right to call themselves a nation people who were promised the unique opportunity to be God's chosen people. There is harshness in this story. And the telling of the death of innocence is always harsh. It's a difficult, unpleasant, unpleasant topic to discuss any time of year. But even more as we have just recently celebrated Christmas with many family celebrations. What exactly is God saying in this? Our task this morning is to search out some meaning for ourselves and for our lives, to seek to find a future of hopes and dreams, something which might make some sense to us and give us a bit of that promise of good news we expect when we hear the Gospels. All this in the midst of what appears to be anything but good news. What we know is that Joseph has his own desires for a safe and secure future for his family. What husband and father wouldn't want, would want anything less. But to his dismay, Joseph is warned in a dream of Herod's wrath, Herod's intent to seek out this gift from God the form of Jesus. When Joseph awakens from his, this distressing dream, he's faced with the need once again to have faith in God's plan. A plan only partially revealed. But Joseph understands this much. He is called to keep his family safe in a situation which promises to be risky. Keeping his faith strong, Joseph packs up his family, and together they run for their lives. Joseph knew he would be called upon to protect Mary's son, who was revealed as God's child. What he didn't know is he would need to face the brutality of Herod, a man who had no moral center, had no intention of allowing anyone, especially a child, to threaten his authority and reign. What Joseph didn't fully understand was how monumental a task this would be. His good news again came in a dream. He wasn't alone, and God was near. This dream did more than just warn Joseph to take action. It assured him that God had already taken action. God's providence and care were guiding him and helping him along the way. God's providence and care were guiding him and helping him assure the safety of Mary and Joseph. Mary and Jesus, even. God whispered, run. And Joseph ran. His family in tow, taking flight to Egypt. Let's hear these words from Matthew once more, focusing primarily in verses 13 and 15. 13 through 15. When they had gone, an angel from the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child and kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Now continuing in 19 through 23. After Herod died, 
And the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are now dead. So he got up. So he got up and he took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea, in a place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived there in a town called Nazareth. So it was fulfilled that was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. What do you hear in these words? What feelings do they invoke? What images do you see in your mind? What prayers arise within you? What does this have to do with you and me? I picture a little boy his mom and his dad. Violence, a tyrant ruler, an oppressive government, the threat of death. So they run. They have left behind more than they have taken. I feel the parents' fear in that knot in the pits of their stomach. certain that their one thought, their one priority is to protect this child, to keep him safe. I see them feeling their way through the darkness of night, hoping not to be noticed. With each passing moment, they are a bit further from what they know, what's familiar, and a bit closer to the unknown and the unfamiliar. I hear their whispered questions. When will we get there? How much further is it? What will we find? What will it be like? Fast forward to today. To our time, our struggles our witness of endless oppression of the innocents or children on the margins. We live in the pain of a world which continues to rob life from our most fragile, our most needy. Hardly a day seems to pass without some incident somewhere across our country or across our world telling of that the sad tales of death and dying children, children of all ages, after all, we are all children of God. How are these innocents dying? We know of the hatred which sends some Herod-type individuals into a murderous frenzies, robbing others of life. Perhaps we aren't even talking about physical death perhaps maybe the loss of innocence. A week or so ago, I read a story about a team of individuals working to protect the innocence of children by posing as children in the ongoing battle against child predators via social media. It's hard to fathom that there are people out there that with the sole determination of preying on young people, on children, on students, in the same breath, we can understand that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We want to protect and fight for what is right. This makes us want to be extra protective. We can only imagine what Joseph must have felt, the emotions that he was going through, 
we are not as far removed from these tales of ancient slaughter as we might hope. Even in our more modern times, they occur, they are written about. So then, where can we find the good news in Joseph's flight to Egypt? Perhaps the question that strikes you as it did me, why didn't God warn all of the families of children two years and younger? Why? Why? I've got a two-year-old little girl. I can begin to question and not understand why God did not warn all those families. Why just Joseph and Mary? Perhaps one answer, though, still frustrating. I fully, be- I fully believe that God did not want any of his children to die. I believe that to be an undeniable truth then and yes, even now. However, in Jesus, we find our salvation. We find our hope in God's promise of something more than endless, fruitless death. would take a cross and a savior to rob the heritage of the world of the last word. It simply was not the time for Jesus to die. Yet that would come and when it did, God would find a way to let love, not hatred and violence be the final word. God would let love not hatred and violence be the final word. Christ on the cross freely gave his earthly life for our earthly lives so we could, with Christ, live eternally in his presence. We will probably still walk away today, away from this scripture, shaking our heads at the insanity. Still wonder about those who escaped death and those who didn't still feel great sadness at the senseless slaughter of the innocents as well we should still puzzle over the modern day violence that creates the pain in the mass shootings or social media predators or bombing or families being ripped apart of the border heard nothing else this morning, hear these words. There is no perfect answer outside of God's love. There is no perfect answer outside of God's love. When we try to seek out a way to make God take on our sense of right and wrong, when we try to perfect or define the perfect act of love, we will fail. Only God can turn wrong into right. Only Christ can free us from our own tendency to sin and destroy. When we try to fix upon one another a way of life, we keep coming back to the reality that living a life of progress because we are works in progress, striving to better understand what God is asking of us and seeking for and from us, as we move forward after this miraculous celebration of Christmas week, we are called to keep moving. We are called to keep straining forward. God calls us to a bigger story. He has events and details in mind for us as we are called and convicted by different things. God calling you to a new place? Is there a new direction that you feel in his nudging? Where is he calling to go in your personal life? Where is he calling you to go in your professional life? What is he calling you to change? Perhaps 
perhaps a better question is, is how will you answer? How will you respond to that nudging? Are you willing, are you ready and willing to change and move forward? God has big plans for us as we move forward and he always is with us. Sure, there are lots of questions and uncertainties, but God doesn't need us to go on our own. God doesn't ask us to go on our own. He wants us to be willing and obedient. Let's not become stuck, but rather be ready for the time to get a move on. part about leading worship in December is we get to do Christmas songs, but Casey said they've all been done since we're at the end, so this is the only one we get left. And I was given strict instructions not to make this um, country bumpkin song, so I'll, I'll try my hardest. Wish us luck. Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go, tell it on the mountain Over the hills and every Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds feared and tremble, when up above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go, tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born down in a lowly manger the humble christ was born and god sent us salvation that blessed christmas Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. for announcements. Let us pray. And now may we go forth with the knowledge, with the understanding, the truth that God goes with us.